Max Holiday was working that Hawaiian punch all night, but apparently the judges were on that Tampico. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jesse, and I'm the founder and grandmaster of MMA, Mexican Martial Arts. Fight Island was a big disappointment for several reasons, and I've decided to make a list about it because list videos usually do pretty good. Before we move on, I wanna let you know that this episode is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. More on that later. <coughs> this was the fight that homies were either willing to pay for or illegally stream and risk a virus. Plus having their lady walk in and start asking too many questions. But Amanda Rivas versus Sage Van Zandt, why do I keep doing that? Amanda Rivas versus Paige Van Zandt was more disappointing than the new UFC 4 cover. Van Zandt was already crying on her way out. Mira, I'm not against crying. I do it all the time because I found out that it makes Marilena forgive me. But you can't cry as you're going into battle. We've already seen how that goes. She was so emotional before the fight that she actually tried to leave. This fool had to escort her to the fingernail guy. She clearly didn't want to be there. She looked scared. She looked awkward. She simply built for Instagram now. In more ways than one. Her muscle memory has been destroyed by things like Dancing with the Stars and TikTok. Kind of like what happens to people that do judo. She's not used to opposition anymore. A sage. A page. No one's opposed to you just wrapping it up already. We know where to find you. Santos versus Bogatov was a backyard fight, and I don't mind the backyard fight. When it's in a backyard, this was supposed to be a island fight. <laughs> I'll get to that later. This fight was kind of weird to begin with. It was a 40 year old versus a 29 year old. And you know what's even trippier? That's the 40 year old! Fools on that great sea Jamba Juice diet. This was Bogatov's UFC debut, and he was clearly trying to pull that. I'm new here, I don't know the rules card. He did an eye poke, then a groin shot, then another groin shot. Then he needs Santos in the face when he was down on one knee. What are you doing? This fight had more illegal activity than Chris D'Elia's DMs. Oh. And then every time he did something wrong, he tried to take advantage of it by getting corner advice. Stay away from your corner, no cornering. I'm not going to tell go. you again, fighter, away from that corner. He was trying to act like he didn't know what Mark Goddard was saying. Come here to your interpreter. He was trying to pull the sorry, no inglés card. But the worst thing about this fight was Mark Goddard not calling the stoppage in the second round. He was pulling the, I'm not out here trying to beat Keith Peterson card. There was a lot of card pulling during this fight, which reminds me, when I pull cards, I like to do it with the ridge. I got a receipt. I know I got a receipt somewhere. Cheap wallet, please. I never even seen a handwritten receipt. Is that cheap? Well, when I pull cards, I guess I use this fat, ugly wallet. Chale, homie, I use the Ridge Wallet. You know what I just realized today? My worst nightmare is your reality. Back in the 80s, fools were afraid to go to sleep because they didn't want to get Freddy Krueger. Today, they're sleeping on the Ridge Wallet. And frankly, that's much more terrifying. Studies show that people who use the Ridge Wallet are generally 85% more happy than people who don't. All of these studies were done by me, but I stand by them. The Ridge Wallet is also the only wallet 
that you could wear in your front pocket without looking like a cochino. If it's up to 12 cards and your cash, there's no way that I'm getting approved for 12 cards, but I like the option. It comes in a bunch of different styles and colors, and you could either get the strap or the clip. And I know what you're thinking. What's the strap without the clip, you know? So get one of each. It has over 30,000 five-star reviews. And if you have really bad taste and you want your money back, you could get a refund within 45 days. So quit sleeping on the Ridge wallet and go to ridge.com forward slash Voto and put in the promo code Voto for 10% off. Please get one. <clears throat> this one wasn't thought of as a disappointment, but it was a disappointment to me. This fool was fighting like Anderson Silva. I didn't expect that. And it was exciting to watch. The problem is, we've already seen how that story ends. And it's often neglected who knocked him out. If you get knocked out by Chris Weidman, you know you did something wrong. This drunken master style is a gamble. And it's a bad influence. Fools are out here actually thinking you have to get drunk to do it right. And it's causing problems. I know that's how Jackie Chan did it, but that fool also killed James Brown just because he was wearing a magic suit. Hollywood. At the end of the day, if you're gonna get down with this drunken master style, you better be rocking a beard. Fighters are getting smarter these days and using them to help absorb blows to the chin. I'm telling you, the smartest fighters have beards. Curtis Blades, Zabib Magode, Zabib, Austin Vanderford. Aldo was given an on-screen death at UFC 251. Not a big surprise after seeing him come out with his hand iced. He's one of those fools that just won't go away and doesn't know when to wrap it up. Like BJ Penn or Chael Sonnen. So Dana White decided to write him out of the script himself. And he did that fool like Mufasa. And the worst part is, he used Peter Pan to do it. After watching that performance, I have no doubt that Triple C would have smashed him. So was Sterling and O'Malley. I might even be willing to say Cody. Dana was trying to prove a point. The only thing it proved to me is that Yamasaki is a master of disguise. Girl. Max Holiday was working that Hawaiian punch all night, but apparently the judges were on that damn pico. It looks like so many people are upset about the decision that they're sending threats to the MMA media for not standing up for Max. That's not right. I've sent plenty of threats to Luke Thomas, but not about a decision. But then some people are saying that it's Max's fault because that while he was kicking bottles on Instagram, Bokanovsky was kicking out Asanya in Thailand. But Max was active. He broke two striking records that night. And then he broke a third record for not getting knocked down. And he knocked down Volkanovski twice. Mira, I'm not a holiday fanboy. I actually picked Volkanovski to win. But we all saw how that fight went down. But he held on to that bout. And now I'm gonna have to try to keep figuring out what that fool's saying. Still, I uh, got the job done, so that's the main thing. Duck deep. Come to think of it, Max is harder to understand. We get one 2000, I think so, that's on four. I haven't seen that much stomping since my prima's quinceanera. Usman stomped Masvidal's feet 50 times per toe. He was trying to send those piggies all the way home. And a lot of people didn't like that. But I wasn't even tripping. You gotta do what you gotta do to win a fight. One time I won a fight by clowning on some fool's credit score. Broke his spirit. The thing that I didn't like was Usman este perpetuating Conor McGregor's tactics. When Usman wasn't foot stomping, he was giving Masvidal that cold shoulder. First, Conor McGregor gets to sit at home and watch Mike Perry face consequences from the UFC for doing the same thing that he did with no consequences. And now he's watching the welterweight champion using his moves. But that's irregular. You already know I'm not a fan of Masvidal, but he was my pick. Based on what I've seen him doing lately, I felt like he had the tools to get the job done. And I felt like him winning could have been exciting for the MMA community, you know? I saw that photo that Ariel had posted of him looking like a prisoner of war, but I was like, he'll have a Gatorade, some pizza, he'll be all right. It wasn't until he started sticking out his tongue that I became concerned. I had seen that tongue before. Tongues don't win fights. It's obvious to all of us that Metal Metal won that fight, but the judges didn't think so. 
but the judges aren't always right. If they were, I'd be locked up right now. Anyway, Masvidal stayed true to his Scarface gimmick, which ended up being kind of ironic. He even said hello to his little friend when Mark Brown FaceTimed him in the corner, but it wasn't enough. Hey, now we know. More than six days notice? Super necessary. <clears throat> island this, island that. Fight Island was like if you watch The Office, but they never even showed you an office. I thought it was gonna be sand, waves, tiki torches, loincloths. You know what adds to the experience, don't trip. The UFC had me thinking it was gonna look like a Street Fighter location. Hey, that's false advertising that, man. As far as I'm confirmed, it looked like they were still at the apex. Some people say they never left Las Vegas. When Dana White kept talking about the infrastructure being built, I thought he was talking umbrellas and lawn chairs, not Abu Dhabi Square Garden. Did I miss anything? What disappointed you? Let me know down below. If you would like to see outtakes, bloopers, blog posts, Winfrey stuff, then please consider signing up for the Patreon. It's what keeps this channel going. And it's only a dollar a month. Link down below. And I wanna say thank you to all of the people who are already supporting me on Patreon. Shout out to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget to go to ridge.com forward slash Voto and put in the promo code Voto to get 10% off. Thank you for watching Mexican Martial Arts. Appreciate it. Good looking out. Late. I'm gonna ask you to subscribe now because according to my research, people are more likely to subscribe when you ask them to. So please, subscribe.